Loading. Welcome to Access the Animus. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video here on Access the Animus. In the recent hands-on demo that we tested, we had the chance to deeply explore Raven's Thorpe, the settlement in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and today we're going to take you on an extensive tour of it. We will introduce you to the characters and buildings that you will be able to find there and we will show you the available activities, the decoration elements and the customization for Eivor, the Raven Sunin and their horse. We will also have a look at some new collectibles that you have to bring back to the settlement from around the world and some other little details that you can enjoy while exploring Eivor's home base. So without further ado, as we usually say, sit back, relax and enjoy your virtual tool in the settlement of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The hands-on demo started on the settlement's docks and as a first activity we did what you usually do when you get back home after a long working day, so we hugged the dog and pet the cat. We were then ready to start exploring the place. As you can see from the map of Ravensthorpe that we tried to recreate, there is quite a number of buildings to visit. Some of them are already there while some are just represented as small tents that wait for the players to be transformed in proper houses. The first building on the right, next to the docks, is the barracks, and as such you can see your fellow vikings and clan members roaming around it. In front of the entrance there is a woman called Idis, whose role is to keep your soldiers in shape and ready for when you decide to use them. After talking to her you can create your own Yom's Viking Lieutenant, and as you can see you can choose the customization not only in clothing and gears, but also in gender and name. To be more specific, you can equip your Yom's Viking with any kind of gear you have found for Eivor while exploring the world, while the physical traits for your lieutenant seem to be randomized and the name that appears below them depends on such traits and cannot be edited. However, at least for what concerned the demo, once we chose our lieutenant's physical appearance we could not change it anymore and we honestly hope that's not the case in the final game. After you confirm your Yom's Viking, there will be a little cutscene featuring them walking out of the barracks. If you want to upgrade or change their gear again though, you can talk to Idis and she will allow you to do that. After customizing your Viking, you'll be able to find them on your longship and even while going on a raid, as your lieutenant will fight with the other members of your crew but will be recognizable by the customization that you have chosen. The next buildings we're showing you are the bakery, managed by Tarben the breadmaster, and the brewery, managed by Tekla. In our walkthrough we decided to use the raw materials we gained in our raids to upgrade other buildings, but we can show you how the buildings look like after unlocking them thanks to the videos released by Dantex and Fizzy, whose links you can find in the description. At the moment we don't know if it will be possible to interact with Torben or Tekla, as is the case in the other buildings in Ravensthorpe, but it seems like unlocking this kind of buildings will only help improving the settlement level and the so-called feast buff, considering the description for Fizzy's video, as the settlement grows, so does its feast. As a matter of fact, in Valhalla you will be able to organize a feast in your settlement by interacting with the bell outside the longhouse. This will trigger a short cutscene dedicated to set feasts featuring some of the settlers, including Hytham, the hidden one, that will raise the settlement's morale and your raiders' stats. There are three more tents in the hands-on demo that seem to have the same purpose of the bakery and the brewery, and they are the fowl farm that deals with all the Raven's clan's chicken, a family-owned cattle farm and a grain farm. Moving to the next tent, we met Merton and his grandson Arth, running the fishing hut. When upgrading this building you unlock the fishing line that will then appear in the tool wheel. You can then bring the fish you catch across England to Arth in order to obtain runes as rewards. Runes can also be obtained in a similar way in the Hunter's Hut, where Wallace the Hunter buys the game you kill while roaming the world. In addition to that, Wallace will keep a log with the discovered legendary animals and by selling their pelts to him, players will receive rewards and a hunting trophy in the longhouse. 
Which kind of settlement would it be without a merchant? In this case we have Yangli and as you can see in the video by Orcorp she will allow you to buy consumables, gears, runes, books and schemes for the cosmetic decoration of the settlement, for Eivor's tattoos and haircuts and for the longship. In addition to that, she will give Eivor a list of deliveries that the players can perform while traveling far from Ravensthorpe. Speaking of cosmetic decorations for the settlement, we'd like to show you how they will work in the game or at least how they worked in the demo. Spread around Ravensthorpe you will find various placeholders which will allow you to add a decorative element in that position. In the demo we had a stone well, hollowed monoliths, archery targets, a Roman bath statue, a Roman gladiator statue and a weapon rack. These were just examples and as we said you will be able to buy more of them to create a unique settlement. A nice addition to the decorative elements is the possibility to customize the huge tree at the center of Ravensthorpe that in the demo is set by default to be a sage tree but you can change it as you can see with the hangman one. Moving to the left side of the settlement we can find right in front of the docks Gunnar the blacksmith that will help you enhance or adorn your weapons and armors. In order to do so you will need to bring him ingots which are treasures that can be found all around the world. There's a way though to make it easier to find them which is upgrading the cartographer tent run by Olsen. Olsen is an experienced traveler that sells you maps to pinpoint valuable objects or resources. More specifically, he will sell you the books of knowledge map, the gear map and the ingots one. On the far left in front of the docks, players will have the chance to change their longship's appearance in Gudrun and her husband Gudmund's shipyard. If you provide them with the right cosmetic scheme, they will be able to unlock and apply new customizations through your ship's hull, sails, shields, figurehead and tail. From the letters we find inside of the house though, it seems like husband and wife do not agree on how to build their ships. Moving on, we found ourselves in front of the Hidden Ones Bureau managed by Hytham. We won't analyze this topic in depth because we already did it in our hands-on impression video but just to give a general idea about it, it will serve as a headquarters for the Hidden Ones in the settlement. Going towards the upper part of the map, we visited Sven and Tovi's tattoo shop in which you can customize Eivor's appearance for what concerns tattoos of course but also hairstyle and beard shape and color. You can buy skins to obtain new ones or find them as flying papers around the world and they will add a specific style to the list in the shop menu. For example, we find a flying paper in Leather Chester and once we got it back to Sven, the scheme was already there waiting for us. A little funny detail about Sven and Tove is that if you walk around their shop, you can see a pig that we assume to be theirs because of the tattoos on its skin. What's left on the side of the map is three houses which belong to Hanwald and Swanborough, Kerry and Maida. We didn't have access to Maida and Kerry's houses because we had not upgraded the settlement enough but it seems like these buildings will contribute to the feast buff as we saw for other ones like the bakery or the farms. Hanwald and Swanborough's house on the other hand could be explored and it seems that upgrading it in addition to the feast buff will provide an upgrade for what concerns the assassination damage stat so we can presume that other houses will give this kind of benefits once unlocked too. Apart from the long house we have four buildings left and the first one is somehow connected to the lore and the mythological aspect of the game. It is the seer's hut where the settlement seer Valka will guide Eivor through vision that will allow the player to travel to another time, another plane and reach locations like Asgard as shown in the deep dive trailer for the game. We're very curious to see how this will work and according to GameSpot it seems that we might even be able to experience Odin's life. We are upgrading the hut in the demo but no interactions with Valka were available so we guess we have to wait and try it in the final version of the game. We then met Rowan, the stable hand and gamekeeper. He will allow you to customize the appearance of your horse and your raven Sunin and in addition to that he will work as a raiding trainer giving you the chance to unlock new abilities for the horse and to improve your riding experience. As you can see in the video, in the demo we could access swimming endurance and strength training. 
Right next to the sables you will see a little pond with a waterfall and if you go with Avar in the water you will be able to interact with it and to watch them while they wash their face or their hands. Plus, as it is now common knowledge that there is always something behind the waterfall, we found a hidden cave with some treasure and a dead body with a mysterious note on it. Lastly, while leaving this part of the settlement, we found a spot where the HUD suggested us to release fireflies, suggesting that maybe we will be able to catch and collect fireflies around the world that we can then bring back to Ravensthorpe. In the settlement we will also be able to experience some of the activities available in the game, like for example flighting. If you interact with Alvis in Alvis and Holger's house, you will face him in a flighting duel. In the dialogue with him, you will learn that somehow Alvis is Eivor's poetry teacher, revealing a different side of Eivor's character very far from the savage viking warrior we are used to see. Just as a reminder, winning a flighting battle will grant you an increase in your charisma level that will unlock special dialogue options in certain situations. Another activity you can try in the settlement is the dice game called Orlog by facing your opponent Mundi, who is waiting for you next to the barracks. At the beginning the dice game gives you a lot of information, maybe even too much to process all at once, but as you go through the match it becomes easier and also kind of fun. The last settler we met is Octavian Claudius Britannicus, a very peculiar character and avid collector of Roman relics. His house in the settlement is quite outstanding, full of Roman statues and columns, it's very hard not to notice it. While roaming the world you will find Roman artifacts and when you collect 5 of them you can bring them back to him. We don't know what kind of rewards you are going to receive from him because in the demo we couldn't manage to retrieve more than 2 Roman artifacts. A curious detail about him though is that in his house we could find a letter written by a girl surprised that no one in the settlement believes she existed, and the letter seems to have Octavian's handwriting. The finally and probably most important building in the settlement is the longhouse. As you can see there is a very big room with a lot of tables for all the settlers and it is the room that the feasts take place in. While walking through it we notice that Eivor can interact with more than one object like for example a mug, the cauldron and the throne. Next to this big dining room, Eivor can access their private room where the player can sleep, read their Ravenstorp status from Ranvi, the settlement's war chief, and open letters addressed to them like for example the one from Sigurd in the demo. Lastly, the main room in this building is where Ranvi is waiting for Eivor in front of the alliance map the players will use to decide which regions of England they want to pledge alliance with, starting their dedicated story arcs. And that was it for today's video. What is your favorite feature of the settlement? What is the building and character you expect to interact the most with once the game finally releases? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn the notifications on so you don't miss any of our future updates. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video.